Is this just fantasy? Indeed so. This is the collected drawings of Luke Eidenschenk. So I have been following his work for a few years now. I found him on Instagram and just enjoyed his work. And this set of books is a result of supporting a recent Kickstarter that he held where he was publishing his second volume of collected drawings. And I had already purchased a print of his and have just been generally supportive of his work. And so I thought I would get just this collected book of drawings. And then as a result, I was able to also pick up a volume one that I didn't know existed. So I have both volume one, say, and volume two of his collected drawings. And today, I just want to talk about a few choice uh, examples of his work in Volume 1. And then I will also do a subsequent video talking about Volume 2. And needless to say, every artist, it's a journey. Uh, and I have loved being witness to it. And we're going to see kind of a few examples of it in this first volume. But I'm not going to show you everything because I think you should support this artist and follow their work, get their books, get their prints. He sells prints online, so if you see something you like, you might get it as a print or something else that you might like is available. So without any further ado, let's get into some awesome fantasy illustration. So right away, I wanted to get into his work, and I do so with two pieces here. One is of a kind of contest between two different sea monsters and the other is a, a scene, you w if you will. And he does both of these things, I think, really well. So if you can see the line work here on these sea monsters, which I love that it's broken up with these streams of, of water coming off of them. Uh, there is just a very fine line. And so, yeah, all this work is black and white. And I especially love the, the just the pure line of some of these flying creatures in the back, just, just with some simple hatching. I will also note that he, he mostly hatches. There is some cross hatching here and there once in a while, but for the most part, he is not overlapping lines. He's just interlocking them. And, and having them be interlaced with each other. Love that all these lines go in the same direction. It's really nice. And just, yeah, there, there's not a, an over-reliance here of filling in the space with a lot of dense lines. Uh, there's lots of negative space, which I appreciate. And that's what you get here in this really powerful illustration that he calls Knight's Quest from 2017. I just love this texture here on the trees, the ground, and he's still able to, to differentiate here. There is a bit of, in, in a lot of his work, I would say a little bit of Franklin Booth influence, as well as maybe some Bernie Wrightson. I'm sure he's, he's influenced by both, as well as other artists. Uh, and I... Love the rendering of this night. It's very clear iconography. Love the little roots coming off, but yeah, the fading in the distance of these trees, and even like the fallen trees. It's clearly observed from nature, like he's paid attention to, to how these things look in reality. And he is doing a really just elegant job rendering them. And also I love the, the angle of it it's it's interesting it, it's something it's it's tilted ex in an, almost in an extreme way and there's just something really engaging i think i like about that it's great work here we get a fun fantasy elements called when this one's called emergence from 2016 um, and I just, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, a king, have done 
and often do a cross hatch that's very similar to this. Very, again, writes in Franklin Booth. Great posture on this figure here. And also just nice subtle costuming. And I love this, this kind of Balrog looking thing coming out of the, the hole here. And I also love that it's enshrined or it's surrounded by white. And you got the little icicle here to tell you that it's snowy. And I, yeah, this is kind of a bare piece of rock and it kind of just fades off. And that's because it doesn't need to be overdone. You don't need to put a bunch of texture over here and here and here and here when the focal point is here. And you, you, you frame it and you don't distract from it. And I think it's just, yeah, it's really lovely work. And this is another one that is on an extreme angle. Just very dynamic, but also just makes it a little more interesting, a little more precarious, you could say. Here we have a handful of fairly de line dense pieces. Here we have Arthur and Mordred, and we were just recently talking about Howard Pyle's amazing illustrations of Arthurian stories. So here is Luke's, and I just love how he's isolating them in these whips of smoke and these very um, almost ex impressionistic or Van Gogh-esque waves of line in the background. And just the density of these lines in here. And the costuming is great. You can't undervalue well-executed costuming in something like this because the artist is, in many cases, making it up as they go. And so if they can make it look believable and consistent throughout you gotta you gotta hand it to him and here we have a, a what i would call probably a magic user this one's called druid i love these little symbols here on this these standing stones nice little figure work there and what i will say that i i really appreciate about luke's work is he is at times depicting something specific, but most of the time he is he's he's doing illustrations that are open ended, that are evocative of a story or of a character or of a moment, but maybe don't have a specific story in mind. And I think that's I mean I think that's what makes it really well done and interesting fantasy art is that it invites the viewer to do some of the storytelling themselves. So I, I am for one, I'm a big fan of, of, of allowing the, the, the viewer to bring some of themselves into the art. Here we have a piece called Reckoning. You got this big serpentine creature and just all this smashed splintering. It looks like there may be some swords in there, weapons, armor, timbers. It looks like it's he's smashing through like a home here. There's shingles, it appears. And we have this fella standing in the midst of it, who I would say is likely like a samurai of sorts. But just... Yeah, what a great action heavy moment. And there's just the ever there's just the subtlest of tone being laid down here, which is not very typical for what he usually does. He's usually very attached to like a dense line work. And here there's a little bit of experimentation, and I enjoy it. And of course, here's his signature that he he do he does. These kind of gestural lines or le and you know, initials i like it so 
So here we have ecosystem, and I really love this image. So great just line-based silhouettes back here. Really pushes them back. But then we get these great mushrooms. I don't know, love a good rendered underside to a mushroom. And then we get like the tops. We get them weaving in and out. And then we get these, these crooked branches covered in mushrooms and these weird looking birds. Almost look like their skulls are on the outside. And these are dripping mushrooms. They're oozy, gooey. And there's a bunch of snails down here. And just, it's, it's an ecosystem. And there's like even this little, these little bugs and gnats flying around. But it's not necessarily one that we're familiar with. This could, these could be just giant mushrooms. And it's a, just a fungal-based plant system or ecosystem, which is fascinating and fantastical. But there's no guarantee that that's what it is. But I just, yeah, the, the, the line work here is so great, so dense, and so textured. And the longer you look at it, the more you notice little things. Like on first look gaze, you might not notice the little snail crawling up here. And I just, I think it's lovely. And it's also at begging to be the, the cover of a book with a title here. I mean, please, yeah. Do, you know, somebody employ him to do some book covers because I think he would crush it. Here we get a dragon. This is Dragon 5, apparently. And I like it just because of these, these really unusual and heavy scales. They look kind of like a eyelash viper or... Just a, a uh, there, there's a, a kind of viper that has just these very leaf-like looking scales. And I can almost see him kind of looking off of that when he's rendering these. And I also love how he gets the shadows in here with his line work down there. It's just, it's, it's a lovely head. And, and part of me is like, I kind of want to see what the rest of it looks like. If this is the head, you get this really weird iris too. Look at this weird eye. But yeah, gotta love a dragon. I do. I wanted to point out this guy right here, this little baby dragon, which has less less of the heavy line work and just more of, of these thrown in like deep shadows with some lines that kind of fade it out. But the thing that struck me about this one is it's 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 a little William Stout to me. A little William Stout in, in how it's rendered and it's framed, and especially like the little lines, little texture lines in there, which uh, is nothing but a compliment because William Stout is, is absolutely incredible. And so I just, yeah, I see a little bit of William Stout in this one. I love it. And we'll close out here with a, a barbarian versus a necromancer. That's what this one's called. And this might as well be Conan the Barbarian here. A nice bloody sword. Just, uh, just in silhouette here, this necromancer, up to no good. But this kind of stalwart barbarian ready to fight. Less dense as far as the line work. I think he isolates it well here, just to differentiate the characters. And here, this is more, the line work's a little bit more more sure, a little less dense, and, and a lot less dense and bit more focused and, and you know heavier line weights you know as he's in the front and he's also just he's a different character and I think that that renders it well but anyway that is just a few of the many choice of the many great pieces in this first volume like here's another one right here just adjacent to it a king at war just absolutely intense and gorgeous so if you're if you're a fan of line art if you're a fan of like black and white illustration, I think you should be following his account on Instagram and or just following his socials generally. And if you love his art, I definitely recommend getting a print. I'll, I'll be showing an image of the print that I own that I have on my wall. And uh, 
you know, be sure to come back because I will be talking about his images from his second volume, the, the most recent, that in, have within it even that have within it more amazing artwork and stuff that's even more ambitious than what you've seen here. Uh, so yeah, I, th yeah, thank you, Luke, for sharing your amazing work and making it available for art fans like me. And folks, if you, if you like uh, black and white art, or if you like uh, an importance of line work on uh, comics and just art, fantasy art in general, then you might like my artwork in my Haxon anthologies, where I am very much dedicated to the the importance or the, the beauty of just the black and white line. Like here, here's some of that cross hatching that he was doing. I do it too. But yes, I have a couple of anthologies here of some comic. I have a couple of comic anthologies that involve magic users and such. And they exist in the same universe as my other comic side questers again i have a, a, a big attention on my line work but i also have attention to color here uh luke if you're available to do maybe like a, a cover or something or a print i may be in touch because i'd love to see your 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 rendition of my characters but these are available on, on my website if people are interested in them and if you like something that's a little more conventional superhero stuff, I don't have it. This is weird, unconventional, goofy characters uh, for your comedy needs. This is Three Panel Origin, my weekly webcomic. This collects the first three years. A book of short stories. Again, more fun cross-hatching because you're going to get that with me. And with that, I... So, I, uh, if, I'll reiterate, amazing work, look, look into them, support them. I have linked his work to this doc, look for his links in the description of this video, and please support your independent artists out there.